Okay, let's just start discussing about this question. The name of which is Carbise Company. The name of this question is Carbise Company. Let's just start discussing this question. <clears throat> it says Carbise Company is a parent company of an international group which has a presentation and functional currency of the dollar. The group operates within the manufacturing sector. On 1st January 2002, Carbise acquired 80% of the equity share of Bike Light Company, an overseas subsidiary. The acquisition was not as successful as anticipated, and on 30th September 2006, Carbise disposed of all of its holding in Bike Light. So they acquired a company, then they disposed of all of its holding, which was 80% holding. So this they disposed of 80% holding. Now the current year end is 31st December 2006. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. Bike light company trading information, acquisition of bike light, disposal of bike light. The information should be used to answer the question requirement from your chosen response options. Now, what are the requirements to this question? Let's have a bit of a discussion about them. That what are the requirements? It says prepare an explanatory note for the directors of Carbise Company, which addresses the following issues. So, what are the issues that you have to address? What is meant by an entity's presentation and functional currency? Explain your answer with reference to how the presentation and functional currency of bike light should be. So I would be discussing, I would be reading through the bike light also first. Then I can actually go on discussing more. Let's talk about bike light company. It says the acquisition of bike light enabled Carbise to access new international markets. Carbise company transfers surplus work in progress to bike light, which is then completed and sold in various locations. So what happens is acquisition of bike light enabled Carbise to access new international market. That means bike light at an international presence now. Carbise transfers surplus, transfers surplus WIP to bike light, which is then completed and sold in various locations. Okay. So Carbise sells to its existing market to whatever possible, uh, to whatever extent that is possible. And then whatever the excess amount is, that excess amount is being uh, transferred to uh, the bike light. And the bike light then goes on and bike light actually. Uh, completes that, prepares that, and sells that then. Okay. Bike light is based overseas where the domestic currency is dinar. Staff costs and overhead expenses are all paid in dinars. So you've got staff costs and overhead expenses. They're all paid in dinars. However, bike light company also has a range of transactions in a number of other currencies. Approximately 40% of its raw material purchases are in dinars. And 50% in the yen. Remaining 10% are in dollars of which approximately half are purchases of material from carbides. So you've got 40% in dinar, 50% in yen, 10% in dollars. Out of that 10%, 50% is from carbides. Remaining 10%, remaining 10% are in dollars. So this ratio continued even after Carbise company disposed of its shares in bike light. That means it was unaffected by the Carbise company's influence or presence as a parent. Revenue is invoiced in equal proportion between dinars, yen, and dollar. To protect itself from exchange rate risk, bike light retains cash in all three currencies. No dividends have been paid by bike light for several years. At the start of six, bike light sought additional debt finance as Carbise was already looking to divest. By bike light raised the funds by issuing the bonds in dinars, none of which were acquired by carbides. Now let's just see. So the first requirement of the question is Now, when we talk about this company bike light, what is actually going to happen is that you would say the functional currency is 
is the currency of the primary economic environment. in which an entity operates primary economic environment refers to the country whose economic forces act upon the entity the country the currency in which the major expenses are incurred currency in which funds are raised and maintained with respect to bike light company they operate in multiple currencies and maintain cash in all currencies their major expenses are incurred in dinar and they raise finance in dinar also country in which they are based has the currency as dinar and therefore considering therefore considering all the relevant factors dinars will be considered to be the functional currency of bike light company dinars would be considered as functional currency of bike light company the presentation currency is the currency in which financial statements are prepared the presentation currency is the currency in which financial statements are prepared presentation currency is the currency in which the financial statements are prepared an entity may have more than one presentation currency depending upon the reporting requirements that it has because of the jurisdiction in which it is operating and because of the because of the jurisdiction in which it operate it is operating and because of the reporting requirements imposed by its parent entity so for bike light company it may have presentation currencies as both dollars and dinars as it would be required to prepare dinar financials for local reporting and dollar financials for reporting to carbys and to enable carbys to consolidate its results that is what you are going to write now let me know in case if any one of you has got any question yeah in case if anyone has got any questions on this let me know
yeah autonomy is usually when okay yes you could talk about that also at times a subsidiary operates as an extension of the parent in which case the functional currency of the parent slash investor is considered to be the to be the functional currency of the subsidiary in the further evaluation of the further evaluation of the situation reflects that bike light is unaffected after the disposal by carbides indicating that it is operating with complete autonomy okay jehan are you okay now yeah is everyone okay till now let me know so that i can move forward then yeah let me know so that i can move forward then anyone else any other question please okay good enough seems like everyone is okay now okay let's talk about the next requirement it says a calculation of the goodwill on the acquisition of bike light company and what balance would be at 30th september 6 immediately before the disposal of the shares your answer should include a calculation of the exchange difference on goodwill from period 1st january 2006 to 30th september 6 let's talk let's discuss about it it says carbides company paid dinar 100 million for 80% ordinary share capital of bike light on 1st january 2002 so if i could just try to calculate the goodwill goodwill in bike light company the cost of investment 
is going to be hundred million dinar. This is what it is going to be dinar. For eighty percent ordinary share capital of Bike Light Company on first January two thousand two, the net assets of Bike Light at this date had a carrying amount of sixty million dinar. Fair value of net assets. The carrying amount is sixty million dinar. The only fair value adjustment deemed necessary was in relation to a building which had a fair value of dinar twenty million above its carrying amount and a useful remaining life of twenty years at the acquisition date. Fair value adjustment land twenty million. Carbides company measures NCI at fair value at all acquisition. And the fair value of twenty percent interest was estimated to be twenty-two million dina. Fair value of NCI twenty-two million dina. Due to relatively poor performance of bike light, it was decided to impair goodwill by. Dinar six million during so and so so and so rates of exchange between dollar and dinar are this 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 first January two average rate for the year thirty first December thirty September six average rate for the year so and so so and so. Okay, let's try to calculate. So the goodwill is gonna be the goodwill is gonna be forty two million dinars, and this is at what? This is at first January two thousand X two. This is at first January two thousand X two. Now, let's just see. You would say opening goodwill at opening rate. Opening goodwill at opening rate. This is the forty-two, which is the opening goodwill. The opening rate is going to be So there is this rate which is one dollar is equivalent to half a dina. One dollar is equivalent to half a dina. So what is actually going to happen is that what is actually going to happen is that this is going to be a division rate. Why is this a division rate? Why? Because one dollar is half a dina. So that means two dollar is one dina. Four dollar is two dina. Ultimately, dollars would be greater. I am not telling you from the perspective of how I would teach at AFM level. I am telling you from the perspective of how you should know from the SBR level, because a lot of students get confused. Do we need to multiply? Do we need to divide? So you see, one dollar is half a dinar. So that means you need two dollars for one dinar. You need four dollars for two dinar. Ultimately, the dollar amount would be greater. Should say the opening rate is half. This is dinars. This is dollar. Eighty-four. Now there was this impairment also. And the impairment was six million.
there's an impairment of 6 million. The exchange rate applicable on the impairment is going to be what? We'll see that. The exchange gain slash loss closing goodwill at closing rate. So the closing goodwill is 36. The closing rate is 0.38. Hence, what happens is you will end up getting this. You will end up getting this. Now, how would we know about the exchange gain loss? So the impairment, do we need to use the average rate or do we need to use the closing rate? So you can use the closing rate for the impairment because the impairment usually takes place at the end of the year. So this is actually gonna be this divided by this. And this is gonna be the balancing figure. How would you know this balancing figure? It's going to be this minus the sum of this. 26.53 is the exchange gain. This is 31st December 2005, which is also 1st January 2006. Now the opening goodwill at opening rate will be this, the goodwill, sorry, the exchange gain slash loss will be what? And then you will have a closing goodwill at closing rate. So closing goodwill at closing rate, which is what is the closing date? It's 30th September, 2006. So it is actually going to be what? 0 0.35. Hence, resultingly, what happens is you will have a balancing figure here. So if I talk about it, there's going to be an 8.12, which is gain. So what was the requirement of the question? The requirement of the question was calculation of the goodwill on the acquisition of bike light company. And what balance would be at 30th September immediately before your answer should include a calculation of exchange difference on goodwill for the period from 1st January to this, 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 this. Now see. The goodwill as at 31st December 2000 X5 was 36 million dinars. And the goodwill as at 31st December 2005 was 36 million dinars. And the cumulative exchange gain on goodwill was this, this, this. At the goodwill is recalculated using exchange rate of 30th September and resultingly and resultingly, the exchange, the goodwill is recalculated using exchange rate of 30th September. Resultingly, the exchange gain 
arising for the year till 30th September is Eight point one two. Remaining calculations are reflected in the spreadsheet. So you can find the workings in the spreadsheet. That is what you are going to tell the exam. I'm just going to open up this spreadsheet. Let me know in case if any one of you wishes to know anything about it. Yeah, let me know in case if any one of you wishes to know anything about it. You don't have the exchange rate, Amna Mohsin, for 31st December 3, 31st December 4. How can you do it? Now, second, there is a question. Somebody is asking that should the impairment expense be not at average rate? Yes, you can go for the average rate. That is okay. That is okay. You can go for the average rate. Again, there are there is a there is actually a difference of opinion on how the impairment loss should be established. But generally, my understanding is that the impairment loss arises usually adherent because you test for impairment adherent. So when you test for impairment adherent, you use year end rate. That is what my understanding is. If you were being made available the exchange rate for 2003-04, you would have calculated the exchange gain or loss for every year only if it is needed. Otherwise, no need. Only if it is needed. Otherwise, no need. Yeah, let me know if I can move forward. Yeah, this gain goes to OCI. Okay, there is somebody who's saying that I'm always confused that how to use the exchange rate to multiply, to divide. Now see, what happens is that, just wait a minute. Just wait a bit, please. Let me try to understand this. <clears throat> Yeah, just hold on, please. 
Hello? What now?
okay my apologies just wait a bit i'm just going to resume actually one of our um, another tutor had a bit of an issue in uh, connecting to the classes and all that so i just had to address to that anyway sorry for that i'm just resuming now Okay, a lot of you people are confused that how exactly should you be dealing with the exchange rates. So let me guide you a bit. Basically what happens is, um, let's say if you are a USA based company, uh, or I'll actually talk about in this question, you are a USA based company, who is car buys. The exchange rate that we are being given is dollar per dinar. Dollar is to one dinar. So, in fact, we were given this dollars to dinar. One is to 0 0.5. Now, how would we know that whether we need to multiply or whether we need to divide? So, let's just try to see this thing. If you write down this exchange rate, how would you write down dollar upon dinar? Dollar upon dinar, if you write down this. Or if you read it like this, you would say, we know $1 is going to buy us half a dinar. $1 is going to buy us half a dinar. So if I write it like this, dinar per dollar is 0 0.5. That's what I could do. If I want to write it, I can write it like this. Dinar per dollar, half per dollar. Or I could write it this. Dollar per dinar is 1 upon 0.5. Is that okay? So if the exchange rate which is given to me in this question is like this, this is what I can do. Now see. What is actually going to happen is that if you are a company which has got, you want to convert this transaction into USD, the transaction is 5,000 dinar. The transaction is 5,000 dinar and you want to convert this into USD. So how would you convert this transaction into USD? You have to make sure that this 5,000 dinar should be either multiplied or divided by the exchange rate. And when you're going to multiply it or the divided by the exchange rate, you should make sure that the common currency is cancelled out. I repeat, you should make sure that the common currency is cancelled out. Now see, so if I write down the exchange rate like this, 5,000 dinar, multiply by dollar upon dinar. So I will be able to cancel out the dinar. How would I be cancelled out the, uh, sorry. If I divide it by if I multiply it by dinar upon dollar, how would I cancel out the rate? I would not be able to cancel out. But if I divide it by dollar upon dinar, so I would be able to cancel out. So now what is it that you need to do? You need to make sure that, so if I divide it by dinar upon dollar, I would be able to cancel out. So now what is it that you need to do? 5,000 dinar divided by dollar 0 0.5, which is dinar upon dollar. So this is actually gonna become 5,000 dinar 
multiply one upon zero point five, it will become dollar upon dinar. Dinar dinar is going to be cancelled, so it will become ten thousand dollars. You got to cancel the common currency. I repeat, you got to cancel the common currency. That is something that you have to do. You have to cancel the common currency. You got to cancel the common currency. Is that okay now? Yeah, is that okay now? Okay, good enough. Let's move a bit forward and discuss further. The next requirement of the question is an explanation of your calculation of goodwill and the treatment of exchange differences on goodwill. In the consolidated financial statements, you do not need to discuss how the disposal will affect the differences. Okay, so with respect to this, what you are gonna do is that you're gonna say, The goodwill in a foreign subsidiary is record is calculated using foreign currency and is treated as the goodwill in foreign subsidiary is established using foreign currency and is treated as A monetary asset that is, it is remeasured at each reporting date using closing exchange rate and the exchange gains slash losses are recognized in OCI. In case if there is an impairment loss arising on the goodwill, such impairment loss is recognized in the PNO. Such impairment loss is recognized in the PNO. The goodwill has been calculated using the fair value of NCI and the fair value of net assets as at the date of acquisition and have been 
remeasured using the closing rate since then and i've been remeasured using the closing rate since then now what is the third and the in fact the next requirement explain why exchange difference will arise on the net assets and profit or loss of bike light each year and how they would be presented within consolidated financial statement your answer should include exchange differences which would arise on the translation of bike light company excluding goodwill for the year ended 31st december 2006 the exchange differences on the translation of the results of the foreign subsidiary arise because because the income statement items of the foreign subsidiary are translated using average exchange rates for the sofp the assets are translated using the closing exchange rate since the opening net assets are originally stated at the opening rate and the profit adds up to the closing net assets the closing net assets are translated at a different rate and profit at a at an average rate which is also different therefore these different exchange rates that are used ultimately lead to the ultimately lead to the exchange differences arising on these transactions on this on the translation of the results so that is what actually happens for the computation i will show you the spreadsheet just wait a bit for the computation of the exchange differences arising during the current year please refer to the spreadsheet Carbuy sold its entire shareholding in Bike Light on 30th September for 150 million. Further details relating to disposal are as follows. Carrying amount of net assets was this: 
the loss for the year was this cumulative exchange gains on bike light was this non controlling interest at 1st january was this okay so the non controlling interest at 1st january was this 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 etc now see what are we required to calculate we are required to calculate of the exchange difference which would arise in the translation of bike light excluding goodwill so exchange differences on bike light excluding goodwill opening net assets at opening rate loss for the year at average rate the exchange gain slash loss and the closing net assets at closing rate there is one thing that i need to establish which is that have they incorporated the fair value adjustment in their working we just need to see if they have already incorporated then we don't need to have the depreciation it says the only fair value adjustment deemed necessary was in relation to building which had a fair value of 20 million above its carrying amount and a remaining useful life of 20 years at the acquisition date carbys company measures non controlling interest at fair value for all acquisitions and the fair value of the 20% interest was estimated to be this 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 this, this. now we are not being told anywhere that uh, whether this fair value adjustment is incorporated or not so i'm just going to assume that it is incorporated otherwise i would have to adjust a lot of things so i would just assume that it is incorporated so what is actually going to happen is that 48 million dinar loss for 9 months at average rate so what actually happens is that you have got opening net assets at opening rate what was the opening rate 
Okay, so this is what you are going to get. I just need to reconfirm if I'm using the correct rates. 0 0.38, 0 0.35, 0 0.37. Yes, I've used the correct rate. Now see, uh, this is the spreadsheet in front of you. The calculations in front of you, kindly look at them and let me know in case if there is any issue. Yeah, please let me know in case if there is any issue. You're right, Hebert. You're right. You are right. Otherwise, why would they give it to us? But I'm just taking one of the leads from this specific working where they've actually shown to me this 47.8 million NCI. That means they have been accumulated exchange gain losses. That means they have been uh, properly accounting for the subsidiary. Apparently, it seems to me like this. That's why I have not considered the, fair, the adjustment for depreciation. And I would even write it down in my answer to it. that it is assumed fair value adjustment and the related depreciation has already been incorporated by the entity. In the figures provided. So I've just written down my assumption now I'm clear on it because the examiner has not told us anywhere whether they have incorporated, they have not incorporated. It's not that, that we are just going to assume uh, from our past experience. No, it's just that I'm, I'm assuming also from the experience that how would they have calculated the exchange differences and all that. That means they've been properly accounting for it. Yeah, anyone else having any other question, please? Okay, for the disposal, just wait a bit. I'm just going to come on to the disposal. I have not covered the disposal till now. Where did I get the clothing net assets? Okay. The clothing net assets was actually uh, some of these. The clothing assets was the sum of these two.
Okay, any other questions, please, now? Any other question? Or shall I move forward now? To the last requirement of this question. Now, it says Part C, calculate the group profit or loss on disposal of bike light. Briefly explain how bike light company should be treated and presented in the consolidated financial statements of car buys for year ended so and so, so and so. Now, let's talk about it. Calculate the group profit or loss on the disposal of bike light. So, the group profit or loss on disposal of bike light. How do you calculate the disposal of bike light? You would say disposal proceeds less fair value of net assets, goodwill, non controlling interest. Disposal proceeds are one fifty million dollars. The fair value of net assets or you could say not fair value but rather the amount of net assets, then there is this goodwill. Then there is this goodwill. And then you have got a non-controlling interest. For the non-controlling interest, you got to do the calculation. As per question, the non-controlling interest is what? 47.8 share of loss share of exchange gains how much is the share holding Eighty percent, right? Eighty percent. So that means twenty percent of the NCI and the share of exchange gain or loss for the current period also. This plus the share of exchange gain or loss on the goodwill in the current period. Multiply by twenty percent. So there is actually going to be a loss on disposal of twenty four point seven. Yeah, let me know if everyone is okay with this. Yeah, let me know if everyone is okay with this.
Yeah, any questions on this, please? Okay, now there is a question on the exchange gain or loss. I'm just going to go through that. Just wait a bit. Okay, now see, there is one more thing which is going to happen, which is that the exchange gains in OCI recycled to PNL. How much is that going to be? Let's just try to see. That is going to be 26.53 plus this 8.12 plus this 9.9 .9 plus there was cumulative gain of 74.1. So resultingly what happens is the gain to be recognized in the PNL is going to be this. So it's one one eight point six five is the cumulative exchange gain that is going to be recycled to OCI, recycled to PL. Stephen Comba, yes, it will be provided. Stay in the WhatsApp group. We'll give you the information how to get it. I've incorporated the exchange gain. Yeah, is everyone okay now? Okay, let me guide you a point on this exchange gain. See, whatever the exchange gains that have been accumulated in OCI, they would be recycled to the PNL. So exchange gain arising on goodwill one, then second, then this third year, the exchange gain in the current year plus the accumulated exchange gain that are available to us 74.1. So all of this is going to be recycled to the PNL. Okay, just let me reconfirm that I'm not duplicating anything. You are right, this exchange gain should not be included. This exchange gain should not be included, which, uh, which we established for the goodwill earlier. But otherwise, the exchange gain arising on the goodwill in the current year would be added. The exchange gain on the net assets would be added, plus the exchange gain given in the question would be all added. That is what the things are going to be. This is how... Is that okay now? Why did I include in the disposal calculation? Because ultimately it would impact the gain or loss. You don't include it. You don't include it, no issues. Let's say for the time being, let's say if I change the calculation, 
and if i say let it be till 41 till 42 you get 24.7 recognize the loss but then this oci would be transferred to pnl combined both of them and you will again end up getting the same answer so better that you include it i'll just do the correcting journal for you people because although it is not needed but i'll just do it for you people the cash is going to be debited the nci is going to be debited the oci is going to be debited the net asset to be credited the goodwill is going to be credited the pnl is going to be credited so this is what it is this the net assets just to show you that what is this uh, journal going to be i hope you get it now that why did i included in the pnl in this calculation nadeshan do you get it now ya yeah, charlester ashar akmal everyone are you all okay now Yeah, all those who are having an issue, do you get it now? yeah because we are disposing of the subsidiary that's why okay everyone else are you all okay now okay good enough now uh, let me just see if there is any other requirement left briefly explain how bike light should be treated and presented in the consolidated financial statements of carbides for the year ended so and so so and so okay so this is what the requirement is for the consolidated soci the results for the first 9 months should be consolidated it should not be consolidated in the sofp 
the disclosures should be provided for the recording of disclosures should be provided for disclosures should be provided for the loss of control of bike light that is how you will have to disclose it do you get it now so we are done with this question the name of which was car bikes company the name of the question was car bikes company in case if anyone has got any question let me know